Personal log, Celestial Day 218.246.16. My trial has ended with an acquittal, and Brennan Shelton has been arrested under suspicion of illegal activity. And I was able to get the symbiote to Arnav Legrand. I don't know if it's going to be in time to help him, though, because he looks pretty sick. In the meantime, I need to get back to Relic Station and bring Zephyr that strange flag and the other artifact that I promised uh, Will Blackstone I would bring her. And uh, hopefully, after that, I'll be able to get a little bit of rest. Hello and welcome. I am Scrapperlock, and this is Starforged Alpha Cluster. We are with our main character, Krista Sutton, who in the last episode returned to Mira Planet and the Station Wreck where she had some stuff that she had collected from Farpoint, from the uh, Shattered Federation. But because of the altercation she had in the Alpha Omega system with Shelton, he was there ready to try and arrest her. There was a trial, and I won't review the whole trial with you, but um, Krista managed to successfully argue her innocence that she did not attack, that he attacked her. And uh, Shelton tried to claim that she was flirting with him and then when he rejected her she got mad and tried to kill him and that didn't work and then during the testimony it uh, came out that Shelton had stolen a bunch of money from the front company of the Universal Stars and that he was working with the Shattered Federation and that's the accusation so he has been arrested under that suspicion and Krista has been allowed to go and at the end she brought the symbiote that she had been bringing keeping in the containment suit in containment field to Arnav Legrand who is looking very pale and very sick because of whatever blood infection that he has thanks to having been attacked by one of the last living forgotten ones and this symbiote he's hoping will cure him now we don't know if that's actually going to be the case and that'll depend on whether we hit or miss on our our vow after we finish it we have one more step to do however in the meantime as Krista leaves um, I think it's time to work on our connection with Kiri we're at nine uh, progress with her and so I think the first thing we're going to do is to forge a bond with Kiri and uh, let's see how it goes and I do think that Kiri is probably going to ask something of her whether or not we're successful. Uh, let's remember that Kiri has administrative skills. So her role is she's an administrative assistant. So um, so let's call her administration as her role. And then we'll, in here, parentheses. Right. And right now she's at plus one. And she'll either get another role or become a plus two ad ad administration person after we forge a bond, if we do. Um, so let's see if Kiri wants to be a bond. So we, so uh, Krista walks out with Mainframe. She bids Mainframe goodbye, and he is going to hang out here with the Universal Stars because he's with them now. He's kind of their hacker. And um, then she goes to Kiri, who's sitting in the front in her uh, at her desk and typing away at a... Uh, a monitor and a keyboard and um, Krista says well we we brought the symbiote to Arnav hopefully it'll be able to help him and Kiri says well I definitely hope that it does and uh, Krista says I want to thank you for all of your help um, it seems like we both helped each other I guess we make a good team and Kiri's response is yes we do make a good team it is a weak hit but she's gonna ask for something and I know what she's gonna ask for the Universal Stars need to obtain a cultural artifact, another one, like an actual cultural artifact. So what Kiri is going to say is that, um, you know, you were, uh, you were pretty good uh, at recovering a bunch of stuff for us and for other people, it seems like. And um, so, I wonder if you would be interested in trying to find another artifact. And Chris is, of course, curious. So she says, hmm, what sort of artifact are we talking about here? And so now we've got to figure this out. So let's think. Um, let's try Descriptor and Focus and see what we get. Archaic Grave. Ah, so... Um, are there grave worlds? I think there are grave worlds, are there not? Yes. Oh, sweet. Okay, there are grave worlds, grave planets. 
Um, so let me just look that up so I can describe it to you, and then I will tell you what my idea is. So Grave World is a once thriving, thriving world that is now a grim monument to a fallen civilization. So um, let's come up with a name for this uh, planet. Uh, let's see, names, hang on. Interestingly, that's not in the Oracle, but let's go ahead and make it up. So we're gonna make up a new planet. And uh, this is a grave world called Orcus. Ooh, I love it. And we don't know anything about it. So this is a legendary grave world somewhere in the Alpha Cluster. We don't even know what sector. But maybe, maybe it'll be here. I mean, we don't know. So there's a legendary grave world somewhere in the Alpha Cluster called Orcus. And it supposedly has something on it, so an archaic grave. So what she's going to claim is that, so the rumors, right? She's going to claim, she says, um, as you might know, the Universal Stars are kind of a small organization compared to the Shattered Federation. And even though we we kind of consider them rivals, they really barely notice us. You know, the nine million they took from us was trivial to them, but it was practically our whole our whole organization's wealth. And so we really need something to even up the score. And there are rumors that there is an ancient burial site on uh, this world, a grave world called Orcus. And within this ancient burial site, there is an artifact. So what's the artifact do though? All right, so it's, it's a, there's an ancient burial site and um, it contains a powerful artifact. But what does the artifact do? Let's try action and theme. Weaken ability. Okay, so there is an artifact, a powerful artifact that can, so what ability are we weakening? Um, I mean, there's edge, heart, iron, not, now I know these aren't literal, but what, what ability would it weaken? So let me think about that. Okay, so she says, it contains a powerful artifact that is rumored to be able to um, to basically wipe out sensors. It, it, it basically will create essentially like a static pulse and completely blind sensors, right? For a time, right? Basically overload the sensors. And if we get this thing, we might be able to make incursions into areas of space owned by the Shattered Federation and blind them to the fact that we're even there. And uh, additionally, this thing could be useful to sell, right? It might be that the government here on REC might want it to keep it out of the hands of um, criminals. It might be there are other factions around the galaxy uh, as you know, there's a lot of law. There's law here on Wreck. You you went on trial here, but in other settlements, there wouldn't have even been a trial. There's a lot of uh, corruption, and there are a lot. There's a lot of lawlessness out there, and maybe we can sell it on the black market. This thing would put us on the map. And so, uh, let me think about what would it be called. So this thing is called the interference engine. And rumor has it that it is located on a legendary grave world called Orcus that was once um, kind of run by or, or inhabited by some alien race. We don't know who, maybe the Forgotten Ones, maybe somebody else. And that it creates, contains this powerful artifact called the Interference Engine that can wipe out sensors. And um, Kiri says, if you, if you can do this for us, um, if you can get this for us, that would be a huge help. And Krista says, well, all right. 
I, I guess I can. And um, Kiri kind of raises her eyebrow, and Chris is okay, and she pulls out her, he, she pulls out her fragment of the Ophion, again covering up the fact that one of the stars on the inside has lit up, and she holds it in, in her hand, and she says, "I will, I swear on this fragment of the Ophion, that I will search." the Alpha Cluster for the World Orcus and bring you guys the interference engine if I possibly can. And she's wearing an Iron Vow. And she's wearing to someone... Now, so this is a bit rough to... Let me think about this. So, <clears throat> we forged a bond. We got a weak hit. On a weak hit, as above. Right? Now she's only troublesome. But they ask something more of you first. <clears throat> to gain the bond and the legacy reward, envision the nature of their quest, and do it or swear an iron vow. So she swore an iron vow. I think I did this wrong with Rowena. I think we get the credit upon swearing a vow. It doesn't say that you have to complete the vow. So she's going to swear an iron vow. And I think this is going to be at least formidable. This might be an extreme vow. So Kiri is now a bond for her. And, uh, but the process of swearing the vow causes her to become the bond. So I don't think we get plus two here. I think we get plus one. So let's roll it with plus one. And we get a weak hit. We, we're determined, but it starts, we started with more questions than answers. Um, and so we're going to say location is unknown at this point and all the other stuff is unknown about Orcus. It's somewhere out there. And so we have more questions than answers. So she is going to say, um, and we get him plus one moment, momentum, which we don't need. I'm not gonna burn it for a strong hit because I think the weak hit is appropriate. She's gonna say to Kiri, so where is this place? And Kiri just shakes her head and she says, I don't know. The rumor is it's somewhere here in the Alpha Cluster. And Chris says, you have no idea? And Kiri says, I'm sorry, but I really don't. So Krista says, well, all right, I'll start looking. So this is going to be a long quest. So let me prepare the vow for us, and I'll bring you back once I do that. All right, so I've sort of envisioned what we have to do here. I think it's formidable, and I don't think there's a clock on this. This is a vow to find the interference engine and bring it back to the Universal Stars. So first we've got to find out what sector, sector Orcus is located in. Then we have to find out where within the sector it is. We have to travel there, discover the uh, grave site, delve that grave site, it's going to be some sort of a vault, find the interference engine, bring it back to our ship, fly the ship back to wreck, and then hand off the engine to the Universal Stars, potentially without being caught or interfered with or having it stolen from us or whatever. So I think this is another formidable vow, and I want to note here, um, so somewhere here, what I want to do is is to note that this is a lore hunter uh, vow, right? Which means um, when we reach a milestone, plus two momentum per milestone, and plus two discovery ticks on completion, right? Because this is definitely finding an extraordinary relic. I'm going to say something, guys, here. Maybe it's just me. But because I'm so used to fantasy and I'm not really used to looking for quote-unquote relics in science fiction stories, I'm having a lot of trouble imagining what the relics would be and not having them just be fantasy relics. So it's been very much of a struggle for me. Hopefully I'll get better at it. I'll get more used to it as we go. Anyway, so she agrees to do this, and she now has a bond, right? So she's now got a bond with um, Kiri, so that gives us a, two ticks. And I'm going to wait until we get back to Relic, but I really should have a bond now with um, Rowena because we swore the vow to her. And so her role is Xenobiology Research, so she's at plus two, I believe, for both of those. Um, that's her role, Xenoarchaeology Research. So, um, 
Krista then takes her leave. She waves to mainframe through the window and uh, that you know into wherever he is and the we're back where the computers are and then she is going to head back to the docks and back to her ship. Krista then enters the storm swept and she takes off and leaves the uh, ocean world of Mira and she is going to just set a course through all of this drift. It's going to take her a day or two to get back to Relic Station. And we have 10 momentum, so we should be able to do this successfully. So let us set a course. So she goes into the drift. However, we're going to set a course and we'll roll it to see whether it's successful or not. But while we're in the drift, remember we've got this curiosity hindrance here. I'm thinking of this as a, these are hindrances from uh, Savage Worlds that is like disadvantages from champions. She can't just ignore being curious. She's curious. She's going to want to look at this um, toroidal uh, polyhedron and see what to make of it, the thing that Will gave her to give to Rowena. So first, let's set our course. And we're rolling supply. Oh, wait, she didn't. She's low on supply. So before we leave, actually, she's going to resupply. Right? She sojourns. She's going to stay over one night in wreck and do a sojourn. And roll, roll, heart. And we get a strong hit. This is a safe refuge. She can choose two recover moves and do an automatic strong hit on them. Well, so let's see. Um, does the ship need anything? The exosuit. The exosuit needs repair. So we need two things. So where are the recover moves? So resupply. And a strong hit. Take plus two supply. Boom. And repair. We are at a facility. So we get five points of repair, which allows her to repair any device for three points there we go All right plus one integrity on the vehicle is one point sorry um and the ship is fine the shields are fine the survey bots fine everything else is fine so um i think we're good now let me leave that open because we're going to use this and then she goes into the drift Everything's fully repaired, she's fully supplied, and now she's going to go into the drift and um, set a course, and we're going to roll supply, which is plus five. Ooh, that's not good. We get a miss, or we can burn momentum for a strong hit. Let's do it. And we get a strong hit. We reach our destination, plus one momentum. Now, before she comes out of the drift, so th this is setting a course. You don't have to, like figure out all the anchorages, but you still come out at the anchorages, right? So she's in the drift for a few hours. She comes out here. She has to wait three hours for it to spin down. She's in the drift. She comes out here. She maybe stops over at Dead Rock for the night. Maybe she won't because she's still not sure what her reception would be like there. She lets her EJR spin up. She then goes back this way, right? So it takes her like a couple of days. And while she's doing this, she's going to conduct extensive research on this um, toroidal polyhedron right uh where is it so hang on let me find it i know i made a journal entry about it right so here it is this is what she's looking at right she's examining this thing um so it is a um polyhedron and so what she's going to do is she's going to sit down in her tech lab she doesn't have like a module so she can't get any help with that but she's going to sit down in her tech lab and she's going to conduct extensive study she brings out her um magnification equipment to look over the surface she's going to press the sides of it to see if it like it seems like it's completely smooth metal there don't seem to be any buttons on it she's going to do things like maybe try running a current through it and all of that stuff and she's going to um see if she can figure out what it is that this thing is about so um she's going to gather information about this thing 
So let's see. She's not scavenging a wreck. So, okay. So I think she's going to secure advantage first. Let's use our lore hunter as much as possible. First, she's going to um, pull up any records that Pyro had and her own records and see if she's got anything in the record. She does like a keyword search for toroid and a keyword search for polyhedron and a keyword search for green metal. And she wants to know, um, do they have any records about this? So first she's going to secure an advantage, right? This is a prep move to see if she can uh, sort of it narrow down what this thing might be able to do. Okay, so we're going to roll and this is wits and we get plus one because of our lore hunter. And we get an opportunity to plus two momentum, plus one on our next move. So what's our opportunity going to be? So let's think about this. Um, let's do a story clue. Leads to a distant or unfamiliar place. Hmm. Could this thing have something to do with? I mean, it just it. I mean, there's no way we just learned about it. Could this thing have something to do with the interference engine? Um. Let's ask the oracle. Whoops. Sorry, misclicked. Uh, I think small chance. No way. Nope. Um, does it have something to do with the star map she has from the Ophion? I'm also going to say very small chance. Nope. All right, so it leads to a distant or unfamiliar place. So this is some... So what she thinks is... This might be some kind of a, almost like a compass that leads to something. We don't know what. But it was made by one of these progenitor races, one of these precursor races. And maybe it leads to a vault or it leads to something. It's sort of like, almost like a dowsing rod or, or a compass, right? And it'll, it'll uh, maybe vibrate or glow or something when you get close. Or maybe it'll show you the way to get somewhere. Um... She's not sure yet. Maybe it's got a holographic map that it'll project. But she thinks that she's they, like there are things like this of different shapes, not this exact shape, maybe triangular, square, cylindrical, that uh, she's heard of before that lead to places. They're basically like um, mini maps or almost like a little GPS that just leads you to one particular place. So now she's going to try and learn more about it and gather information. So remember, she can re-roll any challenge dice. And on a match, she finds out some extraordinary or harrowing new theory. So let us gather information. And remember, we take plus one now because of our previous move. We get a strong hit. We discover something helpful or specific. The path we follow or the action we must take to make progress is clear. Envision what we learn. Take plus two momentum. So let's roll descriptor and focus and see what we get. Immersed settlement. Oh, wait, wait. No, I'm going to undo that because what it wants me to do now is roll another story clue. So let's roll another clue. And we get it involves someone we trust. Okay, well, we have a bunch of connections here that we trust, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven people. I'm going to say I'm not sure we trust Arnev. He's like a, a mob boss. He's been friendly to us, but I don't know for sure that we trust this guy. He's been cooperative, okay, but he's also stubborn. I don't know. Not sure about him, but we trust the others. So I'm going to roll a d6 and see which one of these people it involves. Five would be one, two, three, four, five. Kiri. So something about this this relic that we're holding here involves Kiri. 
And I think, I mean, now I think I'm going to overrule the Oracle because if we look back, it leads to an unfamiliar place and it involves Kiri. Well, she only asks us to go to one unfamiliar place. I think that this thing le somehow could lead us to Orcus, which means Krista's going to want to keep it. Which means she's going to have to convince Zephyr to let her keep it. Okay, so that's... But how does it lead us to Orcus? Uh, let me think about that. Okay, so what I think is what Krista sees as she looks under, the, under her magnification lens, um, she sees engraved along the outside of this relic another thing like her star chart okay and this shows a series of stars going around the outside edges and top and bottom and she recognizes a couple of them like this one is the star that cinder is around and this one is the star that carrion is around right and is orbiting and so she realizes, I don't know the rest of these, but if you look at this symbol, this is the symbol for a grave world. And Orcus, this is the symbol for Orcus in some ancient language that Pyro taught her a little bit about. And some of the controls are written in this language. So she recognizes this. And I think, I think in fact, she recognizes some of it and then let's go back to the ship, because I think this makes the most sense. She recognizes some of the star chart elements somewhere over here, I don't know, on this wall, right? And this is going to be um, data on Orcus. Right, and she's going to need to keep. Um, she's going to need to keep this toroid, right? She can't just use the data here. There's only it's only partial, but the complete data is on this toroid, right? So what Chris is going to need to do is convince her um, her friend Zephyr to let her keep this thing until she finds the world of Orcus. And and I have I have an idea of how she could do that, right? Because if it's a grave world, there are going to be other relics there. And Krista could say, not only am I going to bring this back to you, but I'll bring other stuff to you. And I might even let you have a look at the interference engine before I give it to these other guys, right? So that could potentially convince Rowena. So um, I think that's what, that's the play she's going to make. So she So that's what this is showing. Right, so she has this uh, toroid that has a map on it to Orcus, um, and does this tell her what sector it's in? Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. The clue we got was that it is Orcus. I don't. I don't think it's fair to also add another clue without doing more moves. And she doesn't have time for that because we've now come out of the drift and we've arrived at Relic Station. So she uh, docks. She she calls into the radio tower. She gives her call sign. She docks with the uh, uh, with Relic, and then she picks. She goes and gets the flag, and she's going to pocket in her jacket this toroid, and she. Uh, and zips her jacket close the pocket closed so it doesn't fall out and nobody knows it's there and she's going to pick up the flag and the banner and she's going to walk out into the station and she's going to go to uh module what was it zero four i think that was o four that was rowena's and she uh, presses the button and she hears rowena's voice come in come in and krista comes in and rowena says oh my you know my stars it's been so long i didn't know what happened to you i heard you got arrested and Krista says, yeah, 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 it was, it was a misunderstanding. A misunderstanding? She says, Jackpot, what are you, what are you, what is, wait, that's it. Is that the relic? And she sees 
the flag and Krista says yes this is the relic and this is our final progress and she says here we're even and now we're going to roll progress on this vow of course we rolled a 10 do we ever not roll 10s on vows when have I ever gotten a strong hit on one of these every single time every time so fulfilling the vow we get one le lower level of reward so let's start with that it was formidable it's a box so instead we get two ticks it still gives us some xp we realize the truth of our quest we swear nine vow to set things right to take the full legacy reward or we're gonna like i'm not gonna swear another vow we just swore one so um so we got a weak hit so the question is does that mean that Arnav survived? Strong hit, yes. Um, we get our we get our connection with Rowena. She, she is now completed, and she's now plus two to things. Um, I wish you could kind of resort this between connections and bonds. It's sort of disorganized. So we get another that. Um, is Arnav alive? I think because this is a weak hit. Um, it's not guaranteed, but it's, I think it's a pretty good chance because we did do what we said to do. So let's ask the Oracle, is Arnev alive? Did he survive? He did not. Oh my goodness. Even though we brought him the symbiote, Arnav died. So um, I don't know when Chris is going to find this out. But Arnev Legrand is dead. Can I delete this? All right, so hang on. Let me see if I can delete this connection. Well, wow, okay, there doesn't seem to be any way to delete it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it blank here. And um, the next connection we do, we'll just... Um, We'll just work on uh, on this uh, on this card. So Arnev Legrand has died. We didn't bring him in time. Krista doesn't know this yet, uh, but we didn't save him, which is unfortunate. Okay, so um, so Zephyr says, "Yes, we're even now." And this is really amazing. And she brings it over and she puts it in a, uh, she puts it on a, on one of the lab benches and she starts a scan on it. It's going to take it a long time. You can imagine like a, this little, um, kind of almost looks like a little laser gun comes down and a little beam comes off of it and it starts moving up the pole of the banner little by little by little by little. Um, Chris is, uh, Zephyr then says, hey, listen, Will Blackstone told me he was sending you to bring me something. Do you have it? And Chris says, I do, but I've got a favor to ask you. She says, I need to keep it. And she unzips her jacket and she pulls it out. And, um, you know, Zephyr kind of whistles. Whew, that's really neat. Uh, what is this thing? And she's going to bring it over and put it on one of her examination pads. And, and the holographic imagers scan it. And then a big blow up in hologram of it comes out before them. What is all this writing? And Chris says, well, that's why I need it. I think this is a star chart on the outside. Um, kind of like this one, and she pulls out her Ophion one, and she shows it, and one of the stars is lit up, and Rowena says, wait a minute. There's a star chart on that? And Krista says, yes, there was a star chart. Only one of them is lit up now, but there are others. And um, it turns out when you shine certain starlight on it, uh, it will light up, and one of them was uh, Nyx Theta. Nyx Theta? I'm not even sure I know where that is. She says it's, uh, it's near Cinder. Um, anyway, I think the rest of these will light up when I find them. And uh, Zephyr says, so you mean this star chart is going to lead you to that? And Chris says, no, no, actually it's something different. Somebody asked me to find them some relics on a grave world called Orcus. Now, has, has Rowena heard of Orcus? Um, let's secure an advantage using Rowena's assistance, right? Um, can Rowena tell her anything about this world? 
And we get... Now we get a strong hit. Plus two momentum, plus one on our next move. So Rowena says, oh yeah, Orcus, I know. I've heard of that. And uh, Krista says, well, it's." she says, it's a grave world. It was... Um, uh, it was abandoned a long, long time ago. Um, I think there was a survey sent to it that never came back. And um, so Krista says, well, I kind of promised somebody I'd go there and get them something called the interference engine. Now, has has Zephyr heard of this? I don't know, 50-50. She hasn't. The interference engine, I, I don't know what that is. And Krista says, well, apparently it's... Um, gosh, I keep not clicking on Krista, so it looks like the black hole is making moves. Um, she says apparently it's something they can like disrupt enemy, disrupt sensors over a long range, and who wants this? And Krista says, well, look, I'm not at liberty to say, um, but what I was thinking is this. I think this map will get me there, based on some stuff that I know from Pyro, and so I, I'm what I'm asking is, can I keep this until I find it? I'll bring it back to you. And maybe I can bring you some other relics. I might even be able to get you a look at the interference engine. But I can't do any of that if you don't let me have this thing. So is she going to do it? Let's compel. Uh, connection. Exploration. Where is it? Here, compel. Um, so let's compel. We're using heart, right? She's trying to convince charm we got nine momentum let's see what happens what does rowena say we get a weak hit and momentum won't help us they'll do what you want or agree to your conditions but the agreement comes with a demand or complication um so what she says is hmm she says you can go if you take dagger with you what krista says yeah, I want you to take Dagger, and you you can train her. You're really good at this stuff, and she needs to be better at it. So take Mina with you, and if you take her with you, you can keep it. This way, she keeps an uh, she'll keep it, right? And she'll let you use it, but she keeps an eye on it, and she's going to have it in her possession. And let's say Mina's in the lab and she looks up from, she hasn't been paying any attention. She's had her head down. She's been studying something. She looks up and says, where am I going? And they fill her in and Mina's all for it, right? Because if we look at her, um, she's an explorer. She's distracted and eccentric. Um, she has now an environmental suit, right? A stun gun and a multi-scanner, which is great. Um, I also think I think Krista's going to want to pick up a stun gun. She's kind of tired of always having to do lethal damage. So she's going to see if she can pick up a stun gun. And I think the way to do this is to check gear. I, I think that's the, the most obvious. It's not that she has it. It's can she afford to buy a stun gun and do they have one for sale in Relic Station. So she says, look, before we leave, I've got to get some supplies. I want to take a rest. I'm going to relax here for a while um, and we'll go tomorrow. And uh, she's going to say, you know, I also have to try and stop the gamma ray and see if I can find that. So um, I might want to do that, too. And uh, Zephyr says, well, why don't you find the uh, interference engine first? And then maybe you can use the interference engine to interfere with the gamma ray, which is not a bad idea. So Krista says, hey, that's a pretty good idea. So she says, well, first let me check my gear. And, well, let me first let me go to the shop and see if I can get some stuff. So we have 4 XP now, so we could either get a new asset or upgrade existing ones. And let's see, can she get a stun gun? And strong hit. So yes, so I am now in the notes, in the gear, going to say that Krista has a stun gun. So we'll call it Stun Blaster. Um, so she can now use a Stun Blaster if she doesn't want to kill people. Um, so, all right, let me take a look at the assets and see what one I want to get. No, wait, wait, I already know which one I want to get. I want to get Explorer. Um, the Path of the Explorer. I think this is perfect for her. When she explores a waypoint, she gets momentum. When she finishes an expedition and scores a hit, she gets an extra tick on her discoveries check, so she's going to get more and more discoveries. So she's very good at discoveries, and I think this is probably a good place to stop. 
Let's go ahead and spend our XP. And um, so now, now that Mina is going to be with her, I'll go ahead and create a picture for her. And while we undertake expeditions and stuff with Mina, we'll be building a um, uh, relationship with her. And I have no idea what's going to happen now that Arnev is dead. I don't know whether Kiri is going to be able to reward her. Maybe Kiri gets promoted into his position or something. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, too bad for Arnev, R.I.P. Rest in peace. So we got some good momentum where everything is in really good shape here. And in our next session, we will be going out looking for the Interference Engine. I hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time, I am Scrapperlock, and this is Starforged Alpha Cluster.